A cordial greeting. Today is Sunday, October 19, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it's 8.30 in the morning, local time in the Caribbean, where we continue to closely monitor the evolution of Invest 98. This strong tropical wave is currently near the island of Barbados, and will continue moving rapidly westward throughout the day, bringing heavy downpours and wind gusts across the central and southern Lesser Antilles. On visible satellite imagery, we can clearly see that the tropical wave has gradually gained cyclonic organization, and the low pressure center currently appears to be located to the southeast of Barbados. In fact, if we look at the Barbados Doppler radar animation, we can see that some rain bands are affecting the Lesser Antilles and, in particular, that rotation associated with the low pressure south and southeast of Barbados. During the next 36 hours, heavy rainfall will continue from the island of Guadeloupe down to Trinidad and Tobago. The American model projects between 75 to 100 millimeters of rainfall during that period. In addition, the tropical wave is producing strong gusty winds with speeds between 30 and 35 miles per hour, affecting portions of the central and northern Lesser Antilles, as well as coastal regions of Puerto Rico between Sunday and Monday. Now, let's talk about the complex scenario we have with Invest 98. At 8 a.m., the National Hurricane Center increased development probabilities to 60% over the next seven days. The potential development area now extends across nearly the entire Caribbean Sea, from waters south of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, to Jamaica and the eastern parts of Honduras and Nicaragua. This means that a tropical depression could form anywhere within this broad zone, which makes forecasting extremely challenging. If the system develops farther east, it could eventually track toward the Dominican Republic. On the other hand, if it forms south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, it might move a bit more westward. Some models even keep it weak until it reaches south of Jamaica, where cyclonic development finally occurs. In that case, it could move farther west, potentially threatening Nicaragua and Honduras, or northward, threatening Jamaica and Cuba. This uncertainty is evident in the ensemble members of the American model, which show that virtually any part of the Caribbean Sea could experience the formation of this tropical cyclone. Some members show a track over the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, or eastern Cuba, while others push it westward toward the Western Caribbean. This wide range of possibilities stems from the fact that we still don't know exactly where the tropical depression will form. The European ensemble also shows great uncertainty, though most members cluster around Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and Central America. Meanwhile, Google's AI model rapidly develops a tropical depression, with most members tracking north-northeastward across Haiti or the Dominican Republic, while others move westward toward Jamaica, eastern Cuba, or Central America. At least for now, most track specialized models favor a westward movement during the next four to five days, bringing the system near southern Haiti and Jamaica. And although these projections show it passing well south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, even under this scenario, there's a high risk of flooding across all the greater Antilles. That's because as the system moves through the Caribbean Sea, southerly winds will transport deep tropical moisture over Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. In the longer term, the system is expected to move slowly across the Central Caribbean, increasing flood risk for Jamaica, Haiti, eastern Cuba, and parts of eastern Honduras and Nicaragua. Ocean surface temperatures remain very warm throughout the region, and intensity models indicate that a tropical storm could develop within 48 to 72 hours, with some showing possible strengthening into a hurricane in about 5 to 7 days. Now let's look at the different scenarios shown by the global models. Starting with the American model, it currently shows the farthest east track compared to the others suggesting that Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic could experience significant effects from this future cyclone. For example, in its early morning run, it projects a tropical depression developing south of Haiti and the Dominican Republic by Wednesday afternoon, strengthening rapidly and being drawn northeastward by an Atlantic trough. By next weekend, it shows a Category 2 or 3 hurricane approaching eastern Dominican Republic, with deep moisture from the south affecting Puerto Rico. Recent runs even show the system stalling over the Dominican Republic or Haiti for three to four days, resulting in an extreme rainfall event. According to the latest projection, rainfall totals for eastern Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico could reach between 40 and 45 inches, over 1,000 millimeters, during the next seven days, especially late in the week. While such extreme totals are unlikely to occur exactly as shown, they illustrate the very high flood risk for the region. At the moment, the American model remains the farthest east while other models keep the system over the Central Caribbean. For instance, the European model delays development until around 7 to 8 days from now, forming a tropical storm east-northeast of Nicaragua and Honduras and later strengthening it into a hurricane that would threaten Jamaica, eastern Cuba, and the southern Bahamas. Under this westward scenario, 
rainfall totals would be highest across southern Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Jamaica, ranging between 100 and 150 mm over the next seven days. Because the system also approaches parts of Central America, the model projects rainfall totals of 100 to 150 mm in eastern Nicaragua and northern Honduras. The German model shows a similar westward track and develops a tropical storm in about five days southeast of Jamaica, producing heavy rainfall in the Dominican Republic and Haiti between 150 and 300 mm, and between 2 to 4 inches, 50 to 100 mm, in Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, the European AI model tracks the system south of Haiti, then moves it north-northeastward across the Dominican Republic and Haiti next weekend, producing heavy rainfall across the area. It projects between 200 and 300 mm for the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and 2 to 5 inches, 50 to 125 mm, for Puerto Rico. Finally, the UK model develops a tropical storm just east of Nicaragua in about five days. In summary, during the next 48 hours, expect heavy downpours across the central and southern Lesser Antilles, along with wind gusts between 30 and 35 miles per hour. In the medium term, the system appears likely to continue westward and may not develop into a tropical depression until it reaches south of Haiti. Among the different scenarios, the favored one currently involves a turn toward the north-northeast, potentially threatening the Dominican Republic, Haiti, eastern Cuba, or Jamaica. However, less likely but still possible scenarios include a more eastward track bringing greater impacts to Puerto Rico, or a westward one threatening Nicaragua and Honduras. There's still much to monitor in the coming days, and the main concern remains the high flood risk for the Greater Antilles and parts of Central America. Here at Hurricane Info, I'll continue monitoring the evolution of Invest98 closely to keep you informed. Before leaving, I'd like to ask you to share this video with your friends and family so they stay informed. Also, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and click the bell to get notifications whenever I post new updates. I hope everyone has an excellent Sunday. I'll record a new update tonight. See you then.